erythrocyte. The erythrocyte or red cell blood is specialized in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide bound to hemoglobin. It is a small in size and shape like the concap, has no nucleus or organelles. Blood has been called the river of life, transporting various substances that must be carried to one part of the body or another. Red blood cells are an important element of blood. Their job is to transport oxygen to the body's tissues in exchange for carbon dioxide, which is carried to and eliminated by the lungs. Red blood cells are formed in the red bone marrow of bones. Stem cells in the red bone marrow, called hemocytoblasts, give rise to all of the formed elements in blood. If a hemocytoblast commits to becoming a cell called a proerythroblast, it will develop into a new red blood cell. The formation of a red blood cell from hemocytoblast takes about two days. The body makes about two million red blood cells every second. Blood is made up of both cellular and liquid components. If a sample of blood is spun in a centrifuge, the formed elements and fluid matrix of blood can be separated from each other. Blood consists of 45% red blood cells, less than 1% white blood cells and platelets, and 55% plasma. Erythrocyte morphology. It is the most major of erythropoiesis item. Enucleated erythrocytes are elements pink and round or oval, with a depression or lighter area in the center. All shaped cross section become cap disc 2 micrometers thick and diameter of 7 micrometers. The characteristics of coloration is due to the richness or distribution of hemoglobin inside, their size and shape. Hypertriglyceridemia. The hypertriglyceridemia term is used to describe excess serum triglycerides. For determining the level of triglycerides, it is necessary to perform a blood test preceded by 12 hours of fasting, and overall a much higher triglycerides 200 mg of deciliated blood, hypertriglyceridemia is considered. Hypertriglyceridemia, how you can take control. Hypertriglyceridemia is a big medical term that simply means elevated levels of triglycerides in the blood. The condition can lead to an increased risk of coronary artery disease and must be managed properly. But the good news is you can control many of the factors that led to its onset and this article shows you how. What are the causes? By understanding the causes of this disease, you can make lifestyle changes to improve your condition. According to experts it is often caused or exacerbated by uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, obesity, and sedentary habits all of which are more prevalent in industrialized societies than in developing nations. Some factors such as increased age, genetics and the presence of diseases such as liver or kidney disease, hypothyroidism or diabetes may contribute to hypertriglyceridemia but what you eat and how active you are play a significant role in the development of this disease. For example, foods that you eat, especially foods high in saturated fats, are digested and triglycerides are released into your blood. Some of this will be used for energy or to perform vital body functions and some will be stored. Signs and symptoms. It can lead to symptoms when triglycerides reach excessively and may erupt symptoms, accumulation of fat in the retina, retinal vascular thrombosis and acute pancreatitis occur. However, it will normally remain high triglycerides, likely to moderate without symptoms initially, but 
Over the years, deteriorate the arteries of different organs, especially the coronary arteries, brain and the kidneys. The lesions of these organs can lead to death to patient. The decision when to treat elevated triglycerides can be somewhat complicated. I think the easy answer is anytime triglycerides are 500 or higher, the chylomicrons are very high and the patient's very high risk for losing the pancreas or gallbladder or bile disease. When triglycerides are higher than 150 to 200, there are a couple caveats that triglycerides will add to risk. And one is the Friedwald VLDL LDL calculation will misclassify or mischaracterize lipid based risk in a patient. And then, number two, when triglycerides are above 200, they usually will have remnant lipoproteins. And the remnant lipoproteins are leftover residues of triglycerides and lipoproteins. And those tend to be fairly toxic to the artery wall. So I like to treat triglycerides above 150 to 200 with lifestyle management or metabolic management, certainly medications for anything above 500, and I think consideration for medications above 200. Treatment of severe hypertriglyceridemia is primarily to reduce the risk of pancreatitis, although one very important thing is that these patients are also at elevated risk for cardiovascular disease. And we don't have definitive data here, uh, because this disorder is not uh, terribly common, it's somewhat difficult to do a large long-term study. The treatment of hypertriglyceridemia is really mandatory when it's severe. If the fasting levels are over 500 milligrams per, per deciliter, we really are obligated to treat. And uh, the rationale for that is that we're concerned about the risk of pancreatitis, and presumably lowering the triglyceride uh, level will reduce that risk. Um, once it's below 500, it really becomes more optional and more controversial. Uh, in the 200 to 500 range, we're, we're not necessarily treating. We might treat, we might not treat. It depends on other circumstances. But if, if the fasting levels are above 500, we really have to treat everyone. It's a very complex issue about when to treat patients who have elevated triglycerides. The world's literature is still a little confused about the whole process. For myself, Certainly when they get to be 500 and greater, I will. But depending on the patient's history and their present medical problems, whether they have coronary disease or not, whether they have diabetes or not, is going to certainly make a difference in how aggressive and how fast I treat the patient. I think the problem with triglyceride treatment is, since the world has really been just relying on LDL measurements, we've sort of forgotten about triglycerides. They've been the forgotten part of the lipid profile. I think we're starting to understand that there may be much more implication with disease now than we've ever seen before. I think physicians are going to start to treat triglycerides more aggressively and earlier now than they used to. To better understand cholesterol and triglycerides, we should begin by learning where they come from, where they are stored in our bodies, and why we need them. Cholesterol comes from two sources. One is through dietary intake of foods such as eggs, meat, poultry, fish, seafood, milk, and other dairy products. The second comes from our own bodies as the liver produces it. Conclusion Hyper 
topological examination of the erythrocytes. All parameters of the erythrocyte picture can be determined using a blood cell counter, except assessing the morphology of the red blood cells, which must be evaluated using a blood smear. This means that both electronic blood cell count and blood smear are required to perform the erythrocyte picture. Morphological examination of erythrocytes is carried out by examination of a stained blood film under the light microscope by using the oil immersion lens. The red blood cells are examined for shape, size, stain, and inclusion bodies. Evaluation of the shape of the red blood cells The normal shape of the red blood cells is different between animal species. It is oval in camel, oval and nucleated in bird, and rounded in different other animal species. Conclusion Hypertroglyceridemia state cause hypoxia due to the interaction and change in membrane permeability of the cells and decreased ability to diffusion of oxygen and increased vasodilation prostatalinins.